In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's good to see you all this evening after we had a full liturgy on both Saturday and Sunday, and to be able to celebrate this Tuesday evening with all of you. So the epistle reading which you heard George read a little while ago is this beautiful epistle that sets before us the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, between the people of the Old Covenant and us, the people of the New Covenant. Paul, in his letter, second letter to the Corinthians, writes beautifully about the difference between the law and the Spirit. And he begins in chapter 3, verse 1, a few verses before today's epistle. And he says, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Obviously, Paul's answer is no. He needs no one to write on his behalf. He needs no one to bear witness to him that what he is ministering to or teaching is valid. And you will see in a few sentences that he talks about his validity as a teacher, as a minister, is written in the hearts and the minds and the lives of the people to whom he is ministering to, just as it is so in this community. He goes on to say, he says, you are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. It's interesting what he says. He says that what is written in our hearts, what is on our lips, what our, where our feet take us and our hands and our eyes and all of those things are a testament to the ministry of the church. He says, you are an epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. When we were immersed in that baptismal font and we died to the old Adam, we were imprinted with the Holy Spirit himself. We were claimed by God. Our hearts and our minds were renewed and graven in our hearts and our minds of the living God. And Paul reminds us that if we live up to that high calling, then others will know that God is great. Others will know of God's mercy and kindness and compassion. Others will know who God, the God who sent his own son to become one of us, to live among us, and to die on that cross. He goes on to say, written not with ink, but the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart. And Paul makes a strong difference between the law that was written in stone that the Old Testament people received and what God has graven in our hearts by the Spirit of the living God. One soon, he will say, brings death, and the other, he will say, brings life. He goes on and he says, and we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves. Paul reminds each of us that we stand before the very presence of the living God. We minister and proclaim his words and his good deeds, not because of ourselves, but because of what God has done and what he has enabled us to do. He says, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter of the Old Testament, but of the spirit of the New Testament, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. 
He says, but if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. And here he reminds us of that great glory of when God had given the law to Moses and he came down from that mountain. And we remember as we read in the Old Testament how glorious an event that was and how much Moses had to cover his face because he glowed so much from being in the presence of the living God. But Paul goes on to say that is nothing compared to what you and I have been given in the new covenant. He says, Moses, because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, and the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory, for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect, because the glory that excels, for it is what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. And Paul talks about the old covenant passes away and was replaced with the new covenant. And he goes on to write, Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech because we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we know what God has done for us and what he gives to us. No longer are we veiled as Moses was veiled, but our face is uncovered and we give glory to God. And he says we do this with great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses who put a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. And he reminds us that life is not found in the Old Covenant, but life and glory and the gift of the Holy Spirit himself, and the ability to call God Abba, Father, is given only in the new covenant. And he goes on to write, he says, until this day the same veil remains unlifted and the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. The coming of Christ, becoming one of us, living amongst us radically changes everything in our relationship with God and with one another. He goes on to say, but even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom, because freedom comes from God alone. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Listen to these beautiful words. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. In the new covenant, we are restored to what was intended for us in paradise. And that was to be in the image and the likeness of God. And in the coming of Christ, that which was broken in Adam, that which was cast away, humankind which was cast out of paradise into this world, all of that is restored in the new covenant and the coming of Christ. And he goes on to say that we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit to the Lord. So you and I are called to be in the image and likeness of God. No Old Testament Jew would have proclaimed God as Father. No Old Testament Jew would have called him Abba. No Old Testament Jew would have dared say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven. Yet you and I say that with great boldness. And in fact, the priest says just before you say the Lord's Prayer, with boldness and without condemnation. And we say these beautiful, powerful words and call God Father because Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, became one of us and adopted us as his brothers and sisters and thus as children of the living God. Let us give thanks this evening to God for all the great blessings and the gifts that he has given us and the spirit which he has placed within us as temples of the living God. May God be with you and may he bless you. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace, wisdom, that God it always by thy might we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the 